And welcome back to You Read John in 120. I'm Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as part of a Bachelor of Computer Science at the University of Virginia. And today we're going to be learning about uh, probably one of the most important things uh, that science or, or philosophy or pretty much any field you can point to uh, has come across in their entire history, which is, of course, the fundamental theorem of calculus. I mean, it even has this really important sounding name. Uh, if you haven't taken calculus, uh, this should be new to you. Uh, so calculus is this kind of area within mathematics that's going to be involved with the use of this and its implications. Uh, it's fundamental. Uh, so again, it's kind of important sounding. And theorem just means that it's kind of a result within mathematics. So what is this fundamental theorem of calculus? Uh, and uh, before I write this down, I'm going to point out, I'm going to leave two things undefined in this video. And this is on purpose. You're not expected to know what these two things are. If you know what one of these two things or both of these things are, then great. Uh, if, you do, if you know what both of these things are and you don't know this, then you're probably going to learn something really important today. But if you don't know what either of these two things are, that's also okay. What I want to do is I want to prepare you to learn these things. Uh, and the first step towards that is understanding where they kind of fit into the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is this fundamental theorem. And you could ask, well, why do we learn it this way? I mean, you know, Jeff, when you took this topic, you didn't learn it this way. So why would we even approach it this way? And again, I want to get through the most important things that I've come across in my education in these videos. And this is certainly one of them. Uh, and so we're going to be getting into the kind of uh, consequences of this uh, in a moment. But for the time being, One way you can view this uh, is in terms of all these symbols. And what do these symbols mean? What is it to, to you probably you know, haven't even seen this, you're, you're probably expecting d to be a variable and dx to be a variable times a variable. In this case, it's not. What this is going to boil down to there's this relationship between derivatives and integrals. And again, I'm not going to define what derivatives and integrals are. Uh, I'm going to tell you, and you don't have to believe me, but again, what this f is, is a function that is related to this other function here. I mean, it's closely enough related that they use the same letter. How often do you see that in serious mathematics? where they use the same letter in two different cases. That's important to note. The uppercase is the integral, or integrated or possibly the anti-derivative of f or d. So there is this, this function, this function f, and there's another function, this, this antiderivative, or this, this, this function that's defined in terms of the integral of f on some region. And I'm going to put kind of a star around this whole thing. whole thing is only true in this region A to B, so from A to B. And in the region from A to B, 
this function is defined. It's defined as differentiable, and again, we'll get into what that means later. And it's continuous. And what continuous means, this line right here is a continuous line. There's no breaks in it. We go like that, now there's a break in the line. So the line is no longer continuous. So this whole thing is only true when we're talking about continuous uh, functions. Uh, but again, the important thing to know is that there is this relationship between derivatives and integrals such that regardless of how derivatives work and regardless of how integrals work, that if you take the derivative in terms of the right variable of the integral of some function, that you get that some function. So in other words, that the relation or there is a relationship between derivatives and integrals such that they're kind of inverse of each other. They are, uh, if you take the derivative of something and then integrate it, you usually come back up with this as well. So you, you, you just want to view integrals and or derivatives uh, in terms of each other. You want to, whenever you compute something that is a integral, often enough take the derivative of it so that you can get the function involved. Um, so regardless of how you kind of approach things, as you learn about derivatives and as you learn about integrals, you want to always be looking to see how they are related to each other given the function that you're working with. And again, there is this relationship between the two of them. So as you learn about them, keep that in mind. As usual, if you have I mean, th this is going to be related to other things, but you're not going to know exactly how this is going to be related to other things yet. So this is kind of a starting point, rather than something that you want to necessarily relate to other things at this point. If you want to write this kind of equation down uh, and memorize it, it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt to know that there is this r inverse relationship between derivatives and integrals. And taking the derivative of something and taking the integral or integrating that something. And so, uh, as usual, if you have any questions about this relationship, uh, feel free to ask. Um, and uh, there should be a Bitcoin donation address at the bottom here, so you can fund our whiteboard marker supply. Uh, although, I guess there's probably one more thing to uh, point out. There's a second way of writing it. definite integral of f of t, or this, this integral of f, this integrating f and then taking the derivative results again in this function f. As long as, again, on the um, between a and b on the domain of f, that the function f is differentiable, continuous, and exists. It's defined. So, uh, hopefully that is at least food for thought. Uh, it gives you a clue uh, of what is coming, of the kinds of things that you'll be able to prove and understand in the future, of the relationship between when you start seeing these little derivative uh, kind of quotation marks and equations, or d over dx, or d over d whatever, uh, that you know that integrals are not that far away. And likewise, when you s start seeing this little integral symbol, this kind of an elongated s, with or without these variables on top and on bottom, uh, and this dt at the very end, or d whatever at the very end, when you see that, even if you don't know what integrals are, and even if you don't know what derivatives are, but again, that there's something close by, there's something related to it, there's something related to the way that it works that ties these two things together. As we get into integrals and derivatives, we'll kind of explain what that is and how it works, but for the moment, just know that this is in the background somewhere, waiting for you to discover it. Like it was waiting for Isaac Newton to discover in the mid or in the late 17th century. This equation and our understanding as a species of it has changed the world. It started the Industrial Revolution and is probably one of the most powerful things ever learned. So, here it is, waiting for you to use it and understand it. See you next video.